In today's video, we take a trip to the offices of Uniformation in Shenzhen in China. We talk with Mia and see what's hot under the build plate of their latest product, the GK2. We will then look at the Uniformation GK2 8K resin 3D printer, unbox and print with the machine back in the UK, and I'll give my thoughts on the printer's performance, ease of use, and exciting possibilities it brings to the world of 3D printing. Let's get into it. <laughs> You are watching a master at work. Just quickly, today's video is sponsored by PCBWay.com. So welcome to PCBWay.com, your one-stop solution for your PCB manufacturing needs. With state-of-the-art facilities and a commitment to quality, PCBWay offer fast and reliable printed circuit board production. From prototypes to large-scale production, they deliver on precision and efficiency. Trust PCBWay.com for cutting-edge technology, exceptional service, and on-time delivery. Your ideas, their expertise. Let's build the future together. PCBWay.com. I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Hey! Hi, Sam. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice Welcome to meet you. Welcome to Uniformation. Thank you. I will, go sh uh, I will show you our printer. Let's go and see Follow them. me. Let's go. Hey, here we are. GK2. Awesome. Look at this. Oh, amazing. Check this out. Check that out. That's incredible. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, Mia, what do we have here? Uh, this is our first generation GK2. Yep. And this is our second generation GK2. Hey, I like the lids on these. These are, there's nothing worse than resin printers that you have to take the lid off, set it down on the floor, on the table. This is, this is really nice. What makes your 3D printers unique? in the marketplace? Uh, I think the heater is one of the most important reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, actually, and uh, lockdown, oh, and really quick nice. release view plate. Hey, that's great. Many people like this design. That's incredible, that's incredible. So on the first generation, you have the heater is inside this chamber here, but where's the heater on the second generation? Uh, the heat, guess, you guess first. <laughs> well, it doesn't, look like, it? it doesn't look like it's in the top. It doesn't look like it's in part of this. There's a, there's a vent at the top here, which is the same as the other one. So I'm guessing it's going to be underneath somewhere. Yeah, it seems that the heater missing, right? Yeah. But actually, the heater is underneath the screen. Oh, really? Yeah. Incredible, incredible. And, and the heater, actually, they are different. Uh, the heat different places between these two generations. And what does it heat up to? So it will heat up to 25 or 30 or 35 Celsius. Right, okay, yeah. brilliant. Okay, so great for cold environments. Um, certainly if you're printing in a garage or if you're printing you know, in a shed or somewhere that uh, you know, it's gonna be a cold environment, yeah. um, this is gonna be absolutely perfect for this. So what's the resolution on these printers? It's AK resolution. Excellent, okay, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. That looks absolutely amazing. So um, what, are we, what are you about to print? I guess there's lots to see here. You've got resins, what, you've got a wash center here, you've got a curing center here. There's so much here that you've actually got. So, so tell me a little bit about this unit. Uh, this is our ultrasonic collector. Can we open this? Yeah, you can open it. Ooh, look at that. Uh, so you can just use the view plate, put the view plate here and you can to oh, okay, right, so you can pick it out and just drop it in. Yeah. Oh, wow. So tell me a little bit about some of your resins as well. Uh, this is our flexible resin. Brilliant. Yeah, this is flexible resin and this is ABS resin. That's amazing. ABS like and uh, water washable and biodegradable resin. Yep, so you've got biodegradables, different colors, water washable. Yeah. Um, again, what a great lineup you've got here. So what about some of these smaller parts here? Is this a, a, an original printer or an older style printer? Uh, this is, they can be replaced. Can be used, uh, you can use a uh, standard size view plate. You can also use this smaller view plate. Oh, really? Yeah, the view plate is like if you want to print small and you don't want small print and you don't want to, uh, you print a large one, so yep. you can also choose the small one. This is, yeah, they are 
they can completely fit. I've not seen that on any any other printer. That's uh, yeah. You have two choices. You you've continued to um, surprise me today. That's uh, that's pretty awesome, actually. That's pretty yeah, so. pretty incredible. So Mia, this is the GK one. Yeah. When you've gone from the GK one to the GK two, how mm. have you kind of got your information? Where have you harvested that from? Yeah, actually, we uh, all our new designs is from our GK one customer feedback like the build plane design. As you can see, it's easily to take it out. Quick release design, right? That's cool. Yeah, no, but no more screw. Yeah, I hate it's that. Just lock down. But uh, you can see that GK1, it's a yeah, bit screws. Okay. complex. You, you have to unscrew it, the build plane, then take it out. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so, and the same with the vat as well. So many steps here, then you screw it then you begin print right yeah and the build play they are the same uh, concept you have well like this um you have to unscrew the build play first yeah and then take it out it takes some time to unscrew it okay i can see it's hassle already actually. yeah it's not easy. So you've been listening to the community. There are certain things about this printer that they just didn't like. Yeah. So the flexibility around undoing screws, what the community said is we'd like something really simple. So click here, done. How is mm -hmm. this held on? Is this magnets or is this just weight of the unit? You can just uh, put it here, put it here, then okay. lift up. Oh, I see. Just okay. take it out. Just it's, it slots right in. Yeah, okay, there, there is a slot. Cool. Then put Put down here. Yeah. Just push, put it in. Clicks in, okay. clicks right so, in. That's yeah, amazing. This is easy. And there is one another problem of the screw design. When you have a resin that leak into the hole here. Oh yeah, the screw hole. And right. the L, this line will cure, the UV line will cure it. Then it's hard to take it off. Got it. Yeah, then in this situation, you may have to change a uh, that or change uh, if you can put it out successfully then you probably have to change a new printer oh no okay well the good news is with this one or certainly with this new lineup the gk2 we don't have that issue of course yeah um how long um, how long has the company been going for yeah since 2021 yep. september uh, we released gk1 yep. then in 2022 in october we released First generation, but we found the uh, heating problem uh, because the heater located here will cause the layer lines. Then we uh, redesign the heater so the heater will underneath the screen. Then the second uh, version of the GK2 released in 2023. Amazing. Of yeah. course, because obviously you're going to be heating the chamber inside of here where you're actually heating the resin. Yeah, this, is, this heater is heating the chamber, but this heater heating the resin. He will heat the screen first, then heat the resin. Got it. Amazing. Yeah. So what slicer do you use for slicing your files? Uh, it's, uh, you can, people can use Chitu Boss uh, or Lichi, but for the lychee, now some people may happen, may have the strain problem, but we are solving with the lychee team now. Okay. Yeah. Great. Also, we have our slicer, uniformation slicer. It was modified by the Prusa. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there are three slicer uh, people can use. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, the format is uh, OT, uh, CTB or JXS format. Got it. The, our GK2 can read these two type of format. That's excellent, that's excellent. Yeah, so what yeah. about the price? How much are these? Uh, GK2, is, the price now in the market is 80, uh, 80, 899.99. It's and close to $900. Dollars. Okay, yeah. and of course you can buy this on Amazon. Yeah. You can, can buy this on AliExpress. Yeah. And, and 
official website. Your official website, of course yeah, you can. Yeah, we of course have an official website. Excellent. What's going on friends? This is the Uniformation GK2 resin printer. It's an 8K printer. I met with the Uniformation crowd when I was out in Shenzhen and well, let's get straight on into this one. Of course, you know this because you've just watched that video. And if you haven't watched that video and I've decided to cut this up for one reason or another, well, here's the link for that as well. This resin printer from the very get go looked like a premium product and there's a lot to like about it. On the process of unboxing and setting up, well, it came well packed with an easy to use guide. The box didn't unfortunately come with any resin, so I had some left over from a previous review. Like any FDM or resin printer, I'd always suggest seeking out different materials to print with. In this case though, I used an ABS-like resin and a fast resin from Amazon. Each of these printed well and with excellent detail. And the results, of course, you'll see towards the end of the video. Part of the allure of this printer, and the company for that matter, is really the people behind the product. And having met the CEO and a series of managers in person, and afterwards had communication about how I was getting on with the machine, etc., I've been really overwhelmed with the support that they've offered me along the way, and also with any feedback that I've got about the product. Inside of this timescale, they've also sent me a couple of now available upgrades, which included a 12K screen and USB Wi-Fi kit to send my files remotely. In this case, and for this review, I felt that really focusing on the 8K as a stock machine was important, and the features, like the heated vat and quality overall, was really that much more important at this time. I would say though, if you're looking to upgrade this printer to a 12K, then it would probably be worthwhile when the 8K screen starts to fail. And being that the screen is rated for two and a half thousand hours or 104.1 days, and that's of constant use, you're probably gonna see that this is gonna last you a couple of years at the very least. Now, if you've been a viewer of this channel for any amount of time, and if you're not, well, maybe you should hit that subscribe button, little click there, then you will already know that I dislike resin printing with a passion. Overall, and despite the mess and the smell, it's very much undeniable but the quality of these printers that I've reviewed across the range has always been very impressive. The GK2 again on that level one of the points that we noticed when we were filming in Shenzhen was that the build quality overall seemed to be better than Uniformation's competitors. There's an obvious uniqueness past the green cover the Gen 1 to Gen 2.1 that has changed which seemingly is basically from community-led processes and I like the fact that they were listening to their customers in order to make their delivered product better. Not to mention the filter on this printer seems to eliminate the resin smell altogether. While the quick release resin vat is by far the best that I've worked with, the clip-in system is just simpler to deal with with resin. The user interface, although basic, is very easy to read and use, and the Wi-Fi module again is yet to be installed, and perhaps I'll look to do this in a follow-up video or short, with that being used in the very near future. So what about the specs? Well, at the moment, the 8K version is still being rolled out, and to be honest, and in my opinion, unless you have a good requirement for a 12K printer, at this level, I'd personally stick to the 8 unless they offer a 12K as standard. Plus the 8K screen, as in its resolution, doesn't seem to be rounded up, which is something that I've noticed that other companies tend to do. The 10.3 inch screen is great and the quality seemingly is super impressive. The rear filter, flip up cover, easy to lock and unlock build plate, just makes everything better. It's so well thought out. The vat holds up to 700 milliliters, which is more than enough for what I'm printing at the moment. The heating vat heating up times are a little bit ambiguous with the suggested eight minutes. And that will very much depend on a number of factors, including the temperature of the room, the temperature of the resin, how much is in the vat, and at current UK temperatures, they were doubled the suggested. So just take that on a case by case basis. Then all of a sudden there was darkness as I revealed my first print. No, God, please, no, 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 but unfortunately that was the case. Um, so we whipped that out and um, I re-leveled the bed. Now, it does say in the instruction from Uniformation that you don't have to level the bed because it's pre-leveled. Um, I took that as gospel. So um, level the bed. But the good news is that all the other prints since then have been wonderful. Throughout the printing process, I have been using the stock profile in Chitubox. Again, this is easy to use and easy to set up and compile. There is a paid for version, but in this case, all the prints that have been shown are using just stock settings. Just a reminder to always wear gloves. Resin can be very toxic and the best advice would be to keep it away from your skin. So on this print on the right, just before I reorientated it, you'll see some parts for a new Star Wars robot that I'm working on from the Star Tours ride at Disney. It's an internal part which an LED is basically lit through, so producing a transparent part was required. On the left hand side though, I hollowed out a Batman designed by Eastman. It's a free file and reduced it by 50% and hollowed 
further out just to see how it was going to come out. Um, there was a small amount of resin left inside, but the model cured fine in the end. There happened to be a couple of weird deviations on the print, but I put that down to kind of movement inside of the room because I've got other machines running at the same time. The supports were removed and then the parts were laid on some paper prior to going into the wash and cure station. I'll then leave them for a few days before fitting them into the droid. Again, another good reason to subscribe to the channel. Incidentally, the clear parts basically slot inside of this grey part and that's part of the mouth and basically when he speaks, it lights up. The UV reaction to the clear actually came up with this really unique glow with Batman there. So um, it's going to be interesting, I think, when we put, fire some light through it. Um, the next thing I was working on was um, these Popeye models. I don't really know why I printed them out, but they were just there. I found them online and I figured I'd just give it a go. The demonstration here is basically the one on the left is uh, pre-cured. The one on the right isn't yet cured, um, but they've been sort of washed and dried. Uh, I just wanted to see if there's really any kind of unique differences between the two. Um, there's not. Next up, we've got the Star Wars mouthpiece. Again, this is from the uh, Star Wars robot that I'm working on at the moment. Again, the quality of these prints are just absolutely divine. Let's move Popeye out of the way for a second. Yeah, so again, um, that's going to slot into this new build very, very well. Um, I've got a lot of parts to print for this robot, so uh, I'm going to just be doing a lot of testing and a lot of kind of working with different things. Again, that's the microphone mouth. Again, the, um, the clear parts basically will slot into that, and again, it will fluoresce and LEDs will be used for that particular process. And um, then I, again... I tried to sort of mess around with some stuff and as you can see here there's some black inside of this um generally the robots from star wars are kind of dirty they've got kind of like a mold and mildew to them um i just left some black in the um <laughs> in the vat and i figured we'd just see how that worked out and um maybe i'll use it for some scraps or uh test fitting or test building and you know we'll see how it works out this is a cover again that's really dirty because the black really got in with the clear there um i just couldn't be bothered to clear it out but um there you go that's what happens if you do that and then of course finally this is another one of those front parts for the uh for the mouthpiece on that droid as well so again another really good print they all came out really well and again a lot of these things will just be painted anyway so really the colors and stuff like that don't really matter to me a whole great deal so I guess in closing, I want to thank Uniformation for sending me this printer and uh, hosting me as they did when I was in Shenzhen. So thank you very much to the guys that are involved with that. Um, as a summary, the, if you're thinking about buying one of these, just do it. Just just do it. I don't think you can go far wrong. Even some of the problems that I've had or deviations that I've had in that Batman print, I'm not that concerned of because I know where that's come from. And to be honest, I think they've produced a pretty perfect printer. So that's my review. Thanks, guys. See you next time. <laughs>